Oh, welcome back. South Africa will, from tomorrow, host the AU-led peace process for Ethiopia. This comes after the African Union Peace and Security Council meeting on Friday. Focusing on the upcoming talks on Monday, the meeting was chaired by the permanent representative of the Kingdom of Morocco to the African Union and uh, Peace and Security Council chairperson, that's Ambassador Mohamed Aruchi. The African Union-led talks were previously scheduled for October 8, but were postponed due to logistical and technical problems. Although leaders from the Tigray's People Liberation Front have confirmed their participation in Monday's talks, they have, however, expressed concern about the security of their delegates. Meanwhile, the Peace and Security Council has welcomed the composition of the high-level panel of eminent Africans that will mediate tomorrow's talks, which include former Nigerian leader Olushegan Obasanjo, supported by former Kenyan President Uhuru Kenyatta and Pumzile Mlambonuka, South Africa's former Deputy President. The 24th-month-old conflict between the federal government and Tigray rebels has spread into neighboring regions. Close to a million civilians have been killed and more than six million face starvation. To talk more about this issue, we're joined now by Africa Affairs Analyst Advocate Sipo Mandula. Very good evening to you and thanks so much for taking the time to speak to us. So we understand that the Tigray People's Liberation Front, the TPLF, has been silent about the talks and so has one of the designated facilitators, the former Kenya President Uhuru Kenyatta. Do we know if both parties will be in attendance? Good evening and Jambo Africa to the viewers, Mr. Sepi. So I will say to you that it is still not clear, but what has come out from the statement of Friday, as we have alluded, uh, it seems that the Tigray People's Liberation Front have confirmed, actually, that they will have to come by all means necessary, even if you have this uh, imminent presence, as your clip was saying, but there was a panel of the wise members who are going to be part of the three mediation team members. What is key again is that one has to understand that this delay of these talks has been allegedly in the issues of the logistics for the past two weeks. But what we can say it is that these talks come at a very critical time when you, one looks at what has been happening during the week, both in the Tigray region and in the Federal Republic in uh, Addis Ababa. And again, knowing that both the EU, the UN, the US are part of what you can call the international community who have a vested interest in these talks. And one can talk about, when you talk of Kenya, we have seen on the Twitter streets that already we see that America has been engaging with William Ruto about what is happening in South Africa tomorrow. And nobody knows it in the venue of the talks. Mm. And, and speaking of that, uh, part of the TPLF reservations of those talks were uh, on security matters, the security of its delegates. Uh, could that be part of uh, protecting the um, exact location to ensure that? But also an issue of who would yeah. be attending the talks and in what capacity. Speak a little to that, please. No, 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 correct. Actually, when the uh, first week of October, when that invitation came from the AU uh, chief operating officer, uh, Faki, the issue was that uh, TPLF had given what we call conditions for them to come to the country and engage on this issue. And one of the issues was around their security. And secondly, they wanted to know who is invited in this talk, because remember, these talks are critical in the sense that they will be laying down what we are calling guidelines for the uh, engagement, the time frame, but not also to look only at their security, but to can continue what they have already started. But let me be mindful to the viewers to say that both the African Union Peace and Security Council as well as the United Nations Security Council, since on Friday they've been seized with this issue. They've delayed, uh, actually. Most of them, they've been talking on this issue on what I can call ad hoc uh, meetings on it. So they've not been consistent on dealing with this issue. And if one looks at the protests that happened yesterday in Addis, which were mostly uh, anti-West uh, uh, 
shortcut to uh, saying that we don't want the West to be involved in this mediation. Mm. Tigray also, it is concerned that also their support that they've been receiving from the international community, it is going down now. Because if one looks, both USA, Norway, and many countries that we have seen that they've even pulled the matter back to the UN Security Council on what is alleged to be called a private meeting. And we know that this conflict is not private, it's a public conflict. But there was a perfect meeting by the UN on Friday. And we know that that meeting was pushed by Gabon, Ghana, and Kenya as members of the UN Security Council, hmm. as non-permanent members. And so I want to talk you. about that, Advocate Mandula. As you mentioned, there are interested parties, uh, uh, neighboring countries, but also just looking at, as a whole, the security of the Horn of Africa. And as you mentioned, uh, then uh, there is the suggestion of lack of impartiality on some of uh, the designated mediators. You mentioned Kenya. But I want to look as, as individuals and as a collective, what does this team bring to the table? The former South African Deputy President, Pumzile Mlambo Nguka, there's uh, Ulishugan Obasanjo, the former president of Nigeria, former president of Kenya, Uhuru Kenyatta, as facilitated, perhaps vested interests, but also the complexity of the conflict in Ethiopia. No, no, correct, but let me start with the two latter mediators, both Uru Kenyatta and Obasanjo, they've been seized with the matter. But when you look back in our contribution, we can still pick it up from our former president, Kalema Wakamukante, in 2020 when this conflict erupted. And also, when we bring Mepunzile Mlambo Nuka, one will have thought of the name, who is the UN Special Envoy for the Horn of Africa, uh, Hana Serva Teta. This is a woman who, who has also been briefing the UN Security Council. Obasanjo, there's been this issue of his cloud around being biased. And also, Uru Kenyatta, if you can recall, in the first round of this talk that were scheduled here uh, two weeks uh, ago, he was concerned too. He sent a letter back to Swaki. So if one looks, Uru Kenyatta was likely seen to be close to the US group and also close to the mediation team that is of the, uh, what is chaired by former President Thabo Mbeki. Remember that Obasanjo is a high representative, but he still reports to the panel that deals with the Horn of Africa led by our former President Thabo Mbeki. And, and, and that's where if one looks, if the mediators are not being uh, accepted by the parties, it's going to have a problem. Hmm. Both one can look at Tumzilam uh, Lambonuk. I don't think the parties who are in conflict will have any uh, concern around him. Uhuru Kenyatta is a former president, but Obasanjo still remains that critical person that he has been briefing both the UN, the AU, the EU, and the US. And his impartiality has been questioned at some point by TPLF. You know, but when you look at uh, Uru Kenyatta also, the federal government has been concerned with his, uh, his allegiance to the Tigray. So if one looks at the uh, mediators, and I said earlier when I, I spoke, I said also there is an addition of the panel of the wife in this mediation team, meaning it has been picked up from the initial uh, two weeks ago preparation that failed at some point. And, and, and that's where if one looks at the issues that the mediators have to be, I mean, have to be uh, 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 intimate with this conflict. They have to understand the push and the pull factors. Because once you have mediators who lack and or, or who cannot grasp with the key issues of this conflict, then we'll have almost another year of this talk. All right. So what do you anticipate the first point of business will be at the talks tomorrow if you were to just venture a guess? If I, if I, as, as a young man who has been moving on this country, I will have said to you, the issue is to lay down the ground rules of the engagement, look at the time frame, and at the same time compare it to the agency and what the AU has done seven days ago, saying that there is a need for cessation of hostilities. So when the talks goes on, you need to be saying 
are the guys uh, have been silenced in the Tigray region. Uh, humanitarian aid being given provision to Tigray. So when you go to the talks, you need to be, be cognizant, be mindful of the challenges that are faced by ordinary people there. So you don't need to go and stay there for croissant and for, for muffins and for photo shoots. You need to be sitting there and saying, how do we craft the, 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 uh, the framework of the talks with the timetable, the guidelines, and also those who have to come at a later stage as the guarantors of this peace talk? Okay. Because security, as you have mentioned, it is very key. Thank you so much for your time. You insight, uh, Africa Affairs expert, Advocate Sipo Mandula. We're going to leave it there for now. We'll be back in just a moment. And this time we'll be looking at social media laws of the UAE. Don't go away.